Greetings from Rescue Shuttle Control. Congratulations on making it this far. We're almost there. Uh, in just one more session, we'll be ready to actually start flying our shuttle and uh, getting back uh, off the surface of the planet. We have just a few more things to cover, and today we're going to pull together some of our learning and uh, conduct a simulation. We're going to conduct a countdown simulation that uh, will allow us to uh, check out our systems and uh, see if we're ready to uh, actually fly the craft. In our simulation today, we're going to be using both our OLED graphical display and also the seven segment display that we learned about earlier in order to run through a simulated countdown to liftoff. Now, uh, in order to do that, we will have to uh, modify the circuit that we had last time, but uh, it's relatively simple. As you can see, what we've got set up here is we have the same configuration as last time for driving the OLED display. In this case, we're continuing to use the two uh, hero pins that uh, provide the I2C protocol that uh, we'll be using to uh, drive the display. And also, as before, the red and the black wires connected to the OLED display are providing us with power and ground uh, as before. We also have, as you can see here, the seven segment display that will give us numerical output. And that is also hooked up in a way very similar to the way we used it before. You'll remember that the seven segment display has a clock pin and a digital I.O. pin, clock and D.I.O., which are connected, in our case, to pins 5 and 4 on the Hero's digital uh, output lines. And uh, also, since it's a powered device, the uh, seven-segment display has also got lines connected to 5-volt power and to ground. Here's the 5-volt power connected right here for the uh, seven-segment display. And the black wire is the ground, which is connected to another available ground here on the Hero board. So those are the relatively simple circuit modifications that we need to make in order to be ready for today's uh, simulated liftoff. Now, we do need to now look at the code that will uh, draw on what we've learned before and uh, get us through this countdown sequence and give us the, the proper feedback. So let's turn our attention for the moment to our code window and see what uh, we're going to be using. You'll notice that uh, at the beginning of our, of our code, uh, we have included two different sets of libraries. We've included the seven segment display library that uh, you'll recognize from our earlier work and the, U the U8G lib, which is necessary in order to control the uh, OLED display. And we've used that very recently. So these should be familiar. We'll be using both of those in the code that follows, but we've also got a little bit of additional preliminary assignments in the uh, lines of code that uh, are at the beginning here. Here's something that's a little bit new. We're going to be using what are called macro defines. And these defines are allow us to write a shorthand for what's sometimes a longer or more complicated expression and substituting in a value into that expression. We're going to be using time in this countdown, which is natural. And the time which is internal to the HERO program is generally measured in milliseconds, which is fine, but it's not particularly familiar or useful to the humans that are watching the output. So we want to convert those milliseconds into more normal units, such as minutes and seconds. So what we have here is a macro called number of minutes. And if you write in your code number of minutes and then in parentheses some number of milliseconds, 
This will be substituted with the expression time divided by 1000. So if you take milliseconds and divide by 1000, you'll get a number of seconds. And then divide that again by 60, and you'll get a number of minutes. So this will be the number of minutes. But since these are integer divisions, you're only going to get back an integer result. So you'll get a whole number of minutes with any fractional part of a minute truncated, left off. The remainder of that division, of that integer, integer division, is going to tell us how many seconds beyond the integer number of minutes has elapsed. And so uh, that's what the second macro is. We uh, number of seconds macro will take the number of milliseconds, divide by a thousand, and then take the remainder of dividing it by 60. And that's the number of additional seconds uh, beyond the whole number of minutes. So we'll use that in our code below and you'll recognize it and see that it's a nice convenient shorthand. Okay, moving on. We, uh, as we mentioned previously, in using the seven segment display, we had to reserve a couple of pins on the hero to be used as the clock and digital IO pins. And so you can see that we've made the assignment here, clock uh, of the seven segment as pin five, and DIO for the seven segment as pin four. And just double checking, that does uh, appear to be in agreement with the way we've wired it up. If you wired it up differently using a different set of pins, then you'd want to modify this part of the code accordingly. All right, uh, we have, as we're familiar with now, a couple of display objects that we have defined. So in keeping with our previous work, we'll define our U8G lib object uh, with the name my U8G panel. And we'll define our seven segment display object with a simple name. We'll just call it my display. So those are the names by which we will refer to those devices in our code below. Uh, we have uh, some constants defined here. We have some global variables. Uh, you'll see soon what uh, we're using these for actually and we're only going to be using this first variable right here, time limit, which we've set to 70,000 milliseconds. So that's 10 seconds longer than one minute. And uh, that's what we're going to do in order to uh, simulate a countdown. We'll be starting it at 70 seconds from takeoff. And then we'll see if it correctly displays that time on our seven segment display. That time limit, then, is the starting time, and we'll be counting down from that, both in milliseconds and in minutes and seconds. All right, so far, so good. Our setup routine is very simple and familiar. It's really got just the usual things in it. Here we're initializing the serial monitor, if we should like to use the serial monitor to debug our code. We've got uh, set up commands here for setting brightness and configuration for our seven segment display using the My Display moniker. And finally, we have some initialization of uh, brightness that we did before on our U8G panel. So that's uh, the purpose of that line. So we can see that we have a pretty straightforward and familiar setup. And we move on to our, our loop routine. And it's very simple because it consists of really just a single function call. The uh, custom function countdown, which we will look at right now, because that's the only thing that's going on in loop, is it's looping around and repeatedly calling countdown. So let's look at countdown. I said that it's repeatedly calling countdown. But actually, when we dive into Countdown, we'll see that it's sort of a, a one-way trip because Countdown is written in such a way as to stop when it gets to the end of the uh, Countdown period. But uh, Loop doesn't know that. All right, so what's happening in Countdown? You can see that we have an integer here, an unsigned long integer called time remaining. 
and time remaining is equal to our starting time, time limit, minus a changing number. This function, which I don't think we've used before, millis, which is short for millisecond, tells us how many milliseconds have elapsed since the program started running. So it starts off at zero, and then it just increases in time, which means that time limit minus millis will be a number that's going down uh, as time goes by. So we can see that what happens is once we've established what the time remaining is in milliseconds, our next task is to convert that into a whole number of seconds and minutes. So here you can see number of seconds, our macro that we defined at the top of the program, giving it time remaining in milliseconds. And our number of minutes, likewise, we obtain by calling number of minutes with the same result there. All right, so uh, at this point, we're ready to go ahead and send those numbers off for display on our seven segment display. And we can see that we're doing that by using the show number uh, decimal command, show number deck X. And uh, as before, if you're not completely familiar with what the arguments of this function are, you can uh, look in your library of uh, documentation and see exactly what it is. In this case, the part to be aware of is this uh, last two right here says that we're going to display our number starting in position two of the seven segment display. The first position is zero, the second digit is one, the third digit is two. So we're gonna start writing the seconds in the first of the last two digits on the display. And so that's what our comment says right here, display the seconds in the last two places. And then finally, we're going to uh, call show number deck X again, but this time writing it in the zero and one position with the number of minutes. And the only additional difference here is in addition to writing it far over on the left, starting in position zero, we're also sending it a code here which says that we want to illuminate the colon so that this will have the appearance, the conventional appearance of minutes, colon, seconds. And so that's a nice little uh, extra on our display. We're almost done. At this point, we're going to uh, get an update on how much time has gone by. It won't take very long to execute these steps, but uh, a few milliseconds will have gone by. So we go ahead and update time remaining by calling millis. And now we check and see if we're almost done. If we're almost down to zero, and in this case, down to zero means within 50 milliseconds of zero, then we know it's time to alert the user that uh, we've reached zero in the countdown. So if time remaining is less than 50 milliseconds, we then call for the LED, the OLED panel, the first page command, which starts up a picture loop as you'll remember from our previous use of the OLED display. So here is our picture loop. It looks familiar to us. It's a do while loop that continues to call draw as long as next page returns a true. And when next page returns a false, then this do while loop will stop. Now, here's the catch here. When this do while loop stops, normally we would expect to, to return and just go through the next loop and keep doing it again and again. Instead, we've done something a little different here by putting in while one. And that's like a little trap for the code because one is always true, which means that while one will never complete. So the execution, when it reaches while one, just sits there and stops. It doesn't stop. It just sits there and spins its wheels. So uh, this will effectively trap the execution and it will never get past this point, which is natural because we just want to run this countdown down to zero once and not do anything else. So last thing to do is we need to see what's happening in draw. 
And you can probably already guess what that is. Since it's all focused on drawing something on the OLED display, what we're going to do is, as we've done before, set a particular font for text display on our OLED, and then write a string. In this case, the string is going to tell us we have achieved liftoff. And since this is a simulation and not the real thing, we've added uh, another string uh, written just below it at uh, position 44 down that says end of simulation. So that is essentially everything of interest in the code that we've written here in order to uh, simulate our uh, final countdown and liftoff uh, as we prepare for um, actually leaving the planet uh, very soon. So uh, let's go ahead, test our code, see if it works. And if so, uh, it'll be a great time to um, take stock of what you've learned and uh, get ready for the big day coming soon in which we will actually fire up the shuttle and uh, get off the planet. Let's uh, go ahead and check our code first. Let's verify it, see if it compiles properly. Okay, that looks good. No errors were detected in the code, so that appears to be uh, correct. Um, you'll notice that uh, the hero is currently executing the um, uh, code that uh, we had written uh, during our last session, and uh, it'll freeze and stop as soon as we start uploading this new code and start executing the new code. So we'll watch that as we go ahead. So here we go, uploading our code now. Okay, upload is in progress, and we should be starting the countdown at a minute and 10 seconds from uh, liftoff. And there we go. A minute seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, one minute. And now we're counting down into the last minute. You'll notice that the uh, OLED display at this point has just got whatever the last thing was that was drawn on it by the previous program. But we would expect that when we reach uh, zero in the countdown, that the uh, display will be refreshed and uh, show our liftoff display at the appropriate time. Okay, we're uh, down to T minus 30 seconds and hopeful that uh, this uh, program will function as we uh, hope it will on, on liftoff day. Down to 15 seconds. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and we have liftoff, end of simulation. So, congratulations. We are really close to uh, final success here, and uh, it's very exciting to get to this point. So uh, go ahead, practice this. Uh, make sure you understand uh, what's happening in the code that uh, you've written here, and double check everything as we get ready to uh, put all of our knowledge to the test. And so until next time, and uh, when we get ready to, to fly our shuttle, remember, build everything and invent safe.